Hello and welcome again to another short video presentation courtesy of investingsuccess.ca. Today is the 15th of June 2023. Johann Kepler, German mathematician, astronomer, philosopher, born in 1571, died in 1630. I talked about Kepler in a recent video installment, and I talked about his so-called laws in which he observed the pattern of planets in orbit around the sun. In particular, he said that planets orbit the sun in an elliptical shape, not in a circular shape. And furthermore, he said that when a planet gets nearer to the sun, the planet's angular momentum increases. That is, its spin rate gets faster. As a planet moves away from the sun, the planet's angular momentum, its spin rate, slows down. The reason for that is when an object is closer to the sun, there is a greater gravitational attraction, and that is what causes the spin rate, the angular momentum, to increase and then as it moves away from the sun, the gravitational pull diminishes and the spin rate goes down. So when a, when a planet is close to the sun, it is said to be at perihelion. When a planet is at its farthest uh, distance from the sun in its orbital path, it is said to be at aphelion. Now here's the big one, and I talked about this in the previous video installment. Kepler wondered, do these perihelion and aphelion events somehow affect what happens here on Earth? Does the planet's angular momentum, the rate at which it is spinning, affect human emotion? And in the recent presentation, I looked at this question through the lens of the Dow Jones average as a proxy for the financial markets, and I'm using the financial markets as a proxy for human emotion. Now, in this video, I just want to focus on the inner planets. In the previous video with the Dow Jones, I looked at everything from Pluto on into uh, Mercury. This time, I want to just focus on Mercury, Venus, and Mars. They are the closest ones to us here on Earth. And in particular, I want to see if their aphelion and perihelion events have an effect on commodity futures markets. Let's start with corn. So here's a daily chart of corn futures, and I have overlaid it with Mercury, perihelion and aphelion events, as well as Venus and Mars, perihelion and aphelion events. Now, think back to the early part of 2022. There was the Russian invasion of Ukraine. There was a lot of concern that agricultural crops would not be exported from the Ukraine. There was fear that this was going to create shortages on world market. Emotions were running pretty high amongst people who were trading corn futures. Now look closely at the chart. Look in that April, May, June time frame. So near the end of April, the prices looked like they might be starting to top. And finally in June, the price of corn completely fell apart to the downside. Traders ran away from their long positions. Emotion was changing. So why this topping pattern? Why the volatility? Why the change? Well, it all started with a Mercury perihelion event in April. That was followed by a little swing high when Venus made an aphelion event in May. Mercury was again um, aphelion in late May. But the big kicker in June was Mars. And Mars was at a perihelion event in the middle of June. 
And that is really then what started everything unwinding to the downside. And then if you look at what happened in July, you had Mercury at perihelion. Look at the gap on the chart. I mean, literally, traders just ran out of the room. They were in such a, a state of panic. They wanted to get out of their long positions so bad. So that's an example of what Kepler was alluding to. The emotions of people here on Earth can be affected by what is happening with the planets. And it seems to me, uh, and I'm going to try to illustrate this point as we go on here, it seems to me that... Um, when world events are such that emotions are really charged, when people are on edge, then the planets really can exert a lot of swift influence on our emotions. Now let's take a look at what's been happening more recently. Uh, we've got a better handle, I think, on the... Um, flow of agricultural commodities coming out of Ukraine. Traders have got a, a pretty good handle on supply and demand. But nevertheless, if you look at this chart, what can you see? Well, you've got Mercury in the blue. Um, yeah, it still continues to align to uh, swing highs. And there's even a gap on the chart uh, in, the, in May of this year where, where the price of corn gapped down. Um, Venus actually did a, a perihelion event in April of this year, and that is a, a significant peak at about $6.80 a bushel for corn. So again, if you were using something like a four-hour chart and really honing in on these days when these events occur, you should be able to uh, see the trend changes occurring, and you should be able to take advantage accordingly. Now, uh, June 27th, that's not too far away, we're going to have a Mercury perihelion event. Keep an eye on corn. Let's see what happens. August the 10th, at the far right side of the chart, we're going to have a Mercury and a Venus uh, aphelion occurrence. So anytime you get two of these planets that are overlapping, um, look for significant changes to occur. Here's a chart of soybeans. At the far left, you'll see that I've got a, a lower pane here with the true strength index. That's one of my favorite trend indicating um, oscillators. And you can see that I've got a bit of a green rectangle. And what I want to point out to you is, this was February 2023. Really not a lot happening in the world of soybeans. And it was more or less just drifting sideways. And the true strength um, index was, again, sideways. There really wasn't any sort of a trend. But look what happened. Mercury at Aphelion comes along in the third week of February. And all of a sudden, you've got the sideways action starting to break down. The trend is now to the downside. And you can see that uh, in late February on the true strength index. So you've got a Mercury event. And then you've got the true strength index that says, hey, trend is changing. And there's your invitation to participate. Um, you would have taken a, a short position in, in soybeans or maybe sold a call option out of the money uh, to the upside. Um, price comes down and it makes a bottom. There was no, now we're talking March uh, of this year, there was no perihelion or aphelion event. There would have been an other uh, astro event that, correlated to that swing bottom. But then uh, towards the end of March, the price of soybeans goes up and it runs into a mercury perihelion event. And that's it. It can't press any higher. It drifts along sideways for a while. And finally in April, we've got a Venus perihelion event and that starts the ball rolling to the downside again. And you would have had confirmation of a downside move by simply watching the true strength index um, like literally two or three days after the Venus event, yeah, the True Strength Index said, hello, wake up, we got a trend change, and trend is turning bearish. And that was over 
um, uh, $1,500. Uh, and look at where it came down to. You would have made some serious money just by um, taking advantage of that decay in, in the prices. Now, look at what happened most recently. We had Mars at Aphelion in uh, late May. And you can see that since then, the price of soybeans has recovered. And lo and behold, your true strength index flipped over, crossed over, to tell you that the trend had changed to bullish. Here's a chart of uh, silver, and I want to draw your attention to start off with um, over towards the left-hand side of the chart. Um, we're talking now November, December, January of this year. Uh, things are pretty flat, pretty sideways, not much going on. But then, look what happens. We've got Venus at Aphelion. You've got Mercury at Perihelion, and basically... That was um, an indication that this flat sideways trend, something was going to happen. And in fact, it did. If you look at the true strength index, yeah, it started to turn bearish. Even while the price still uh, started to drift sideways, that bearish indication came right at the confluence of those um, Venus and Mercury events. Price came down into February, and what's interesting is there was a Mercury Aphelion event, seemingly just in the middle of this decline. But if you do some additional math, you will soon learn that this Mercury event came at a 78.6% Fibonacci retracement of the late 2022 rally. So now you've got this curious overlap between these Fibonacci retracement levels and these Aphelion perihelion events. Very interesting to watch for any overlap there. Uh, price of silver falls and then in the middle of March, uh, when we started to have some bank failures, the price of silver took off to the upside. But in April, it reached a peak and uh, it was actually a double top uh, formation. Uh, the first top was in April. The second top was in May. But look at what the first top was. Venus perihelion. And then uh, after it made the second top, things really started to fall apart, aided in small measure by Mercury at aphelion. And uh, actually that aphelion event, um, it comes at a 38% Fibonacci retracement of the higher route of the move made from March through April. So again, there's the overlap with Fibonacci and these perihelion aphelion events. Very, very interesting. If you happen to be a coffee trader, this is an interesting chart. Um, I'm going to draw your attention to the left hand side of the chart. Uh, December 2022, we had uh, Venus at Aphelion, Mercury at Perihelion, and look at look what happened. That exactly marked a change of trend and a pretty significant decline for a coffee trader. And that actual change of trend, you would have also noticed that on the slow stochastic. And the slow stochastic is one of my other favorite oscillator um, functions for following the trend. Um, price of coffee declines into January, recovers, and look at what happened in the uh, middle of February. It reached another peak, and that just happened to be right when Mercury was at aphelion. Uh, price of coffee then declines. You would have seen that uh, taking shape on the slow stochastic, and it made a swing low in late March. And again, Mercury was there, uh, this time at perihelion. And uh, from the end of March uh, through to the middle of April, there was a rally, and you would have picked that up again on the slow stochastic. The rally actually hit a roadblock right when Venus was at perihelion in April, and look at the stochastic. I mean, it's well above its upper boundary line. Uh, you know that this rally is getting a little long in the tooth, and you're probably wondering, is it time to get out? Is it time to tighten up on a stop loss? Well, 
yeah, just look at Venus and it answered those questions for you. Uh, more recently, we've had Mars at Aphelion, uh, late May, early June. And again, the slow stochastic tells you that the trend is turning bullish. And there it is. Thanks to Mars, uh, you've had a, a, a tradable little rally on coffee. And now your slow stochastic is starting to encroach on its upper boundary line. Probably has room to move yet, but it's soon time to start tightening up on some stops. Maybe looking at just getting out of the way if you are long coffee. Let's take a look at uh, copper. And the key takeaway on this copper one, and I need to do more research on copper, but the aphelion and perihelion events capture some, but not all, of the swing pivot points that I'm seeing on the chart. And um, again, you're going to use that slow stochastic, and it's going to indicate the, the start or stop of uh, bearish and bullish trends. And you can see that um, Venus and Mercury uh, definitely do play a role, but um, there, there's a lot of these swing points that are that are unaccounted for, if you will. Um, Mars, more recently, uh, late May, was uh, at Aphelion. Slow stochastic tells you the price trend is changing; it's becoming bearish, or sorry, bullish. And sure enough, um, you, you've had. Uh, You've had a little bit of an increase here in copper, and it's been enough to get some excitement going uh, under the copper mining stocks. But now, uh, towards the end of June, which is not that far away, you're going to have mercury at um, perihelion, and that likely will create some kind of an inflection point again on copper prices. So watch the end of June for something to happen on copper. Cotton, very interesting. Um, in the middle of 2022, right in the middle of COVID, uh, something happened on the cotton market. Um, I suspect it had something to do with COVID and the fact that people were working from home. And if you're working from home, you don't need to go to the store and buy a fancy dress shirt made out of cotton fabric. Uh, you're literally working, you know, in your underwear at, at your computer and, and doing meetings by Zoom. So if you don't need cotton, the demand isn't there. And of course, the price is going to come down, which it did in a pretty astounding way in June of 2022. But look at what the tipping point was. Mars, perihelion. And that just upset everybody's emotion and kaboom, the price of cotton just literally fell out of bed. Uh, it did recover into uh, the late summer of 2022, but again, it ran out of steam. You had a, Ver a Mer Mercury and a Venus event, and then down you came again. Now, from late 2022 until now, basically, the cotton market, in my opinion, is is in trouble. It, it's just drifting. Uh, yes, there's all of these little ups and downs and bumps and wobbles a lot of them do align to uh, Mercury and Venus. Um, but you know what? Trying to trade this now in such a tight little range, um, this is a troubled market. I would I would stay away from cotton uh, until we see consumer demand starting to uh, recover and add some life to this otherwise dead market. Live cattle. I know that I've got uh, subscribers to this channel who uh, trade live cattle futures. Um, the one key takeaway that I'm going to point out here is that the Mercury, Perihelion, and Aphelion events do not seemingly work very well for cattle. However, uh, I can tell you that I do like the Venus events. So April of uh, 2023, um, you had Venus at uh, Perihelion. And that seems to have denoted a an interim top um, at about $1.78 a pound for live cattle. And then, you know, one, two, three, seven trading sessions later, kaboom, uh, major gap down. Now, most recently, we had Mars at Aphelion. Uh, yes, the cattle market had been generally increasing through the month of uh, May. But then as soon as that Mars event comes, look what happens. The slope 
the the intensity of that price increase just takes off like a scared rabbit thanks to mars now you've got um uh, it's going to be a while before we have another mars event uh, there is a mercury event at the end of june but as i said mercury uh i don't want to say it doesn't work ever uh, it's just not um something that works always now who knows maybe at the end of june the uh the mercury event will actually trigger something in the way of a price correction it's worth watching but uh, certainly for cattle keep your eye on venus events and mars events as they occur and so from all of this in the context of commodities what can i conclude I have to conclude that Mr. Johann Kepler, so many hundreds of years ago, was right. Uh, as above, so below. What happens up in the cosmos affects our emotions. We are somehow hardwired to the patterns, the angular momentum, uh, the spin rates, and all of the, the, the planetary distribution is laid out in accordance with the Fibonacci sequence. I mean, it's all one grand design uh, put together by, call it what you want, God, Allah, Vishnu. Somebody um, has done some pretty remarkable engineering. And uh, the human animal is directly tied to all of that stuff, and it affects our emotions, and it affects the markets. And that's about it for now. So again, um, I'm going to have to do some major revisions to the 2024 Financial Astrology Almanac. I mean, the things that I'm learning about and that are that are coming out of these old books that I've got in my collection are just astounding. And uh, the next almanac uh, that comes out next year is going to be uh, very different from what I've typically been producing. Don't forget about my most recent book, Follow the Trend. And I, I mean it. you got to follow the trend, okay? You can't be trying to, uh, to just buy or sell something because an astro event occurs. you got to watch what the trend is doing. I talk about the various indicators in the book. Um, a lot of them simply don't work, uh, but some of them do, and I make that very clear to you, and I, I step you through the, the connection between trend changes and Fibonacci math, all of that good stuff. And, uh, of course, I got my, my astrology letter and various other reports uh, for subscribers. Uh, keep an eye on that stuff. So, um, if you are a commodity trader, um, start to look at uh, these inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and their perihelion and aphelion occurrences. I think you're going to find some very interesting connections, and it will add a whole new level of interest to your trading and your investing. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and we will talk very soon.